There are many types of dryads or oreads in Greek myth. Generally, they represented different types of trees or different woodland areas. One of the most interesting were the Meliae, not only for their role in Greek myth, but a surprising connection that links the myths of ancient Greece to Scandinavia. Hi friends, I'm Kevin McLean. Please give a like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page. And a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. The Meliae were nymphs of the ash trees, as their name means either the ash tree or honey. But in ancient times, the ash was connected to a type of honey, a sugary substance, something like maple syrup and became identified in the medieval period at least with manna from the Bible. Now the sap produced from the ash tree was made in a very similar way as making maple syrup. So a cut is made in the bark and the sap of the tree is collected from it. And it's very likely that this sugary substance that was produced by the tree was the origin for the ash tree's name in Greek. They were in the oldest sources the daughters of Uranus and Gaia. When Kronos severed his father's sky from the earth, his blood poured down upon the land, perhaps symbolic of rain. The Meliae sprung up when this blood hit the earth. The first great deed of these dryads involved the fostering of Zeus himself. After Rey gave birth to Zeus, she had him hidden away so that Kronos wouldn't find him. While the exact mountain and cave in which Zeus is hidden is disputed by ancient sources, in some he was said to be fostered by nymphs fed on honey, melai, from the ash trees, in contrast to or in combination with the goat Amalthea. The meli, or honey of the ash tree, was thought to be heavenly, fallen from the sky, or the stars, and that the Meliae nymphs were born of Uranus reflects this idea, making it fitting food for the young Zeus. But there is a greater implication to the Meliae, which is hinted at by Hesiod. He says in Works and Days, I will sum you up another tale, well and skillfully, how the gods and mortal men sprang from one source, now, what is he talking about exactly? He is referring here to Uranus and Gaia, parents of the Meliae, but also parents of the Titans, equally ancestors to gods and men. From the Meliae, it is said that Zeus made the third generation of men, the Bronze Men. They were a warlike race, and eventually Zeus brought them to destruction. But did he destroy all of them? That a race born from ash trees would be warlike is probably connected to the making of spears from ash, but it also shows a close connection between the origin of humanity and the unity of heaven and earth represented by the holy tree, that to some was also the nurse of Zeus. In the earliest sources then, the gods and men were strongly connected. Now, when exactly this occurs is murky in Greek myth, but the men that Hesiod must be referring to, based on the chronology, is the race of men directly before the flood. These are the humans of the age of Prometheus, said by some to be the creator of man, but who is certainly the ancient male ancestor in genealogies. He was the father of Deucalion, the only man allowed to survive the flood, along with his wife Pyrrha, daughter of Epimetheus and Pandora. This creates a problem for our understanding of who exactly Hesiod meant. Maybe it was a separate group, for Prometheus does not appear linked to any nymphs. He himself is thought to be a titan, 
and it may be this that Hesiod is referring to, but who else then are these bronze men and when does this occur? Because in the tale of Prometheus, there are of course many many other humans around at this time, and presumably he is not even one of them. So it may be these people that are being referred to, but it's difficult to say. Yet Prometheus is imagined as bringing skills including the use of fire to man, and that these skills persist in mankind today because of Prometheus's actions. And so it's to be thought that, in fact, the descendants of the current population of man is in fact linked inextricably from those previous bronze generation. So regardless of the myth of the destruction of the race of the bronze men, it seems that they were thought to be the direct progenitors of the present iron race. For other than this myth of Zeus creating this race of men, there is no other different race of men that is ever created, it says. And so it has to refer to these people. Therefore, all of humans are in some way, although not clearly explained how, are the descendants of these Meliae, ash tree nymphs. So although slightly confusing, it's very likely that this is a remnant of an older myth that has survived only in this small fragment. According to Apollonius of Rhodes, the bronze giant Talos was a descendant of the Meliae as well, linking their idea and conception to this idea of bronze and metalsmithing, which we'll come back to in a bit. Statius said that the Arcadians were a people older than the moon and skies, born from the hard trunks of forest trees, before fields or houses or ordinance of marriage. Oaks, laurels, and ash peopled the earth. They were filled with terror at the setting of the sun, and sojourned into the west seeking after it. This archaic importance of the ash tree in Greek myth is mirrored in Norse myth and may be of the same Indo-European origin. The world tree, Yggdrasil, a name meaning Odin's horse, is said to be an ash tree. Yet even more, the first man is named Ask, meaning ash tree. Odin, Honir, and Lothir, his brothers, happen upon Ask and Embla, the first woman, meaning vine. They were said to have no soul, sense, heat, motion, or good hue. Odin gave them spirit, Honir gave them sense, and Lothar gave them heat and good hue. It seems beyond coincidence that both Greek and Norse sources link the ash tree to the generation of humans, or at least some humans. Moreover, it's preserved in Norse myth the idea that the ash tree produces honey. The world tree Yggdrasil, said to be an ash tree, is also said to rain down a kind of honey dew, which the bees then collect and produce honey with. Now, to my knowledge, the ash trees in Northern Europe do not actually produce the, the same kind of sugary substance that the ash trees in Southern Europe do the ash trees that you would find in Greece. And so this myth wouldn't necessarily directly pertain to the ash trees that are found in Northern Europe. And the idea that still links them to the production of a kind of honey substance must then be an older myth that is somehow linked to Southern Europe. Now some have linked this to an ancient fire-making process with Ebla, a vine, lit by an ash drill with perhaps sexual imagery uh, invoked in the process. If such a ritual is a potential origin, it may explain the fact that Prometheus, the fire-stealing god, appears to be of the same group of men which Hesiod says were born from the ash tree. In Welsh myth, Gwydion and Math create a woman out of flowers and marry her to Thlai, who is reborn from an oak tree. And Gwydion's name itself relates to 
of the wood, as does Druid referring to knowledge and trees as being fundamentally connected. Zeus was said to have made men from the Melii, just as Odin and his brothers. The role of both is not necessarily the shaping and forming of men, but the gift of spirit and sense. If he is the father of men, then it's only through this one single instance. It is possible that the Hecatirides were also identical to or identified with the Melii. Their name refers to a rustic dance of the hands, and there were five of them and five males who may have been the same as the Coretes, the dancing warriors said to have protected Zeus when he was an infant, and they made loud noises to drown out his cries. Now, together, they were known as the Dactyloi, the fingers. Thus, they joined in marriage finger to finger, thus associating Zeus and humans with the action of the human hand, the prime symbol of humans' active power. Now, in turn, these Dactyloi are very likely the same as the Dactylis, associated with Mount Ida in Crete, the same mountain which many say Zeus was fostered in. The Dactylis were the first metalsmiths, perhaps linking them to the bronze race of warlike men, and the fire necessary in order to work the metals. So we have here all of these various strange different connections that are somehow all coming back to this origin of mankind and the origin of Zeus himself being somehow strangely intertwined around the symbol of the ash tree, connected also, possibly, with the symbolism of fire. Whatever the case, the Melii, daughters of sky and earth, were likely thought to play a role in the ancestry of mankind, and even the king of the gods. Well, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out my Patreon page. Again, a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. As always, stand tall.